Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Here today we are going to talk about the final type of entry for our projects and that is real-time entry. So what are we going to do if we want to real-time enter a project into Soundtrap? And when I say real-time entry, I mean play an instrument and actually have that instrument translate into Soundtrap. Um, there are a few things that I want to talk about for this. Uh, number one, I highly recommend that you do not use Bluetooth headphones for this. Um, the delay is already going to be bad enough since your information is traveling to Soundtrap's servers and back. Um, don't add the delay of Bluetooth headphones on top of this. So make sure that you are using uh, normal wired headphones. And then... Um, the delay will be much better and you'll be a lot happier with what you're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a two measure loop. So I'm actually going to shorten this down uh, to two measures and have that work. And I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, what my hands are doing in this one because I've got a MIDI keyboard that will play and I've got my typing keyboard and I'm going to show you how to use both of those to actually record here in just a moment. So to bring up the actual instrument, um, this is called the clean black drum set. All you do is click the little logo right here and it brings up the instrument itself. And you'll notice each one has a letter on it that corresponds to a typing key. So if I wanted to play the kick drum, I would play the A key on my typing. Now I do know that if I have the correct octave selected, that that is low C on my, uh, or C1 <clears throat> on my piano keyboard, or again, A on the typing keyboard. <clears throat> Next, um, D would be the snare. And U would be the closed hi-hat. Or... So, that's kind of the rhythm <clears throat> that I'm going to go about creating in this. I'm not going to get wild and fancy and go all around with the different drums and stuff. Um, toms and stuff like that. I just want a nice basic rhythm. So the first thing I should do is I always want to make sure that I set my metronome to be the tempo that I want the project to be. This is key. So I'm going to tap here with my mouse the tempo that I would just play in. And when I'm happy with that, I'm going to hit confirm. Now, my next thing is to practice with that. Let's see, where are my keys? Or I can do it up here. Now, the thing you should know about the piano keyboard um, is that it is velocity sensitive. So I can actually get different velocities out of the tap there. So if you want something that's a little more velocity sensitive, I suggest using a piano keyboard. The typing keyboard is not velocity sensitive. So it'll be velocity neutral and you'll have to go back and adjust it on the fly. So um, I've got my metronome on. There are a few things you might want to set in your metronome. For one, the count in. So this is going to give me two measures of just metronome before it actually starts recording. So that's something you probably want to have happen. Otherwise, as soon as you hit the record button, it might like start recording and you not have enough time to get to your actual keyboard. So um, make sure you've got that. And then you're armed to record and you've got the record button right here. So we're going to take a run on playing that rhythm and this time I'm going to do it on the typing keyboard. So 
So as soon as I get to the end of my cycle region, the recording process stops. So now we've got a recorded region in here. And what we want to do is go in and inspect it to see how we did. So we're going to use now the piano roll. So it's a little tight right now. So we're going to zoom in so that we can inspect it a little bit easier. So let's take a look. Right here we did pretty good, and then this is a little ahead, a little ahead. Looks like I was a little ahead most of the time. So uh, what we would like to do is we would like to do a process called quantize. So I selected all those notes by dragging a box around them. Now I'm going to right click them and go to quantize. Now I have two choices here. I know that I didn't play anything faster than an eighth note. So my go-to quantization here would be an eighth note. But you might not know that, and then I would suggest sixteenth note be your go-to. So if we did sixteenth note, it kind of bunches some of my rhythms up. So I'm going to undo that, and now I'm going to quantize to the eighth note, and it's perfect. Now every note is perfectly synced up with the grid. And we know that anything that's synced with the grid is going to sound better. So here we go. This is what this now sounds like after it's been quantized. Good. So uh, let's do that process again. But this time, let's do it on the uh, piano keyboard. Here we go. And. Okay, again, I'm going to, this time, I'm going to try to select all by going Command-A. So if I click in the piano roll and hit Command-A, it selects all. So that's a shortcut to, or Control-A if you're on a Windows. And now I'm going to quantize to the eighth note again, and I've got a nice... Now hopefully you'll notice that this has a little bit more character to it. And if we check velocities, we'll see that not all of the velocities are equal. That's one of the real advantages of the piano keyboard as opposed to the typing keyboard. I think it gives it more character. Now, let's say that you don't have the skill yet to record all of the notes at the same time. So we're going to go back this time and record one instrument at a time. So here we go. I want to stick with the piano keyboard and show you recording one instrument at a time. And Okay, so I had a nice little rhythm there. Again, I'm going to come down here and Command A, select all. And I'm going to quantize to the 16th note this time because I played some 16th notes in there. And good. Now, all I have to do is set my playhead back to the beginning and hit record again. But this time, I'm going to play the snare part. Now, I will say that's probably not the best snare part that has ever been played. Since I don't want to select them all this time, I'm just going to draw a box around the snare parts. I'm going to quantize to a 16th note and listen to that. And as soon as I quantize that, everything begins to work better. Now I'm going to go back and lay in some hi-hats. Okay, again, that was 16th notes. I'm select them all. Didn't get the first one. Right click, 
quantized to the 16th note, and now I have a hi-hat line. Now, that's a lot more complicated than I myself would have been able to do if I had been recording that on my own. So you can see that you can kind of create more dense layers if you do it only one instrument at a time. In the end, you'll notice, if we look back at the project, this is all just one uh, region. It didn't make it three separate instruments. It's just one nice region. And if I'm ready to loop, then I can get in here and loop that uh, idea out. And I'll have a larger section of this loop. So those are my tips for recording in real time. If you want to be a real time uh, recorder, uh, I think the number one thing to do is always make sure that you quantize. Quantizing is going to be your best friend, especially with the delay potential that Soundtrap has. So I uh, hope this helps. If you like this and it was helpful, hit the subscribe button down below. Give us a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. You all have a great day.